Untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green Shaman's deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck features a ton of new cards from Jumpstart Historic Horizons, one of which is Harmonic Prodigy, a 2-mana 1-3 human wizard, so one of the few non-shamans in the deck. It has prowess and says if an ability of a shaman or another wizard we control triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. And there's a ton of shamans with sweet Enter the Battlefield abilities in the deck, as well as other triggered abilities that the Harmonic Prodigy can double, leading to some very explosive starts. And then another new addition is a Goblin and Archimancer, 2 mana 2-2 two, two Shaman, saying each spell we cast that's a red or green costs 1 generic mana less to cast, so it can give us a nice mana discount to more easily deploy our hand. And then at 3 mana, one of the all-stars of the deck is a Rage Forger, a 2-2 two, two, that when it enters a battlefield puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each other Shaman creature we control, and whenever a creature we control with a plus 1 counter on it attacks, we may have that creature deal 1 damage to target player or planeswalker, so it gets especially gnarly if we have Harmonic Prodigy in play to not only double the plus 1 counters from the Rage Forger, but also deal additional damage when those creatures attack. And then a Seasoned Pyromancer, another great card, a 2-2 Human Shaman that when it enters a battlefield makes us discard two cards, and then we draw two cards. For each non-land card discarded this way we get to generate a 1-1 red elemental creature token. So if we're empty-handed, the Pyromancer will simply draw two cards, which is great. Otherwise, still gives us a ton of card filtering to maybe get rid of lands we don't need, even if we don't generate elemental tokens. And if we start doubling those triggers with the Harmonic Prodigy, we can dig very deep and make a ton of elementals in the process. And then for 5 mana we can exile the Pyromancer from our graveyard to generate two of those 1-1 one -one elemental tokens as well, so that gives us an extra mana sink in the late game. And since we're a red-green creature deck, it's difficult not to include Collected Company in the deck, a 4 mana instant, that lets us take a look at the top 6 cards of our library and put 2 creature cards with mana value 3 or less from among them onto the battlefield. Gets even better if we can cast it at a discount thanks to the Anarchomancer, and great if we can find creatures like Rage Forger and Harmonic Prodigy and start doubling those triggers right away. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana we're also playing with the Lenor Elves as another non-shaman just to speed up the deck and let us cast those companies a turn sooner. At 2 mana, besides Prodigy, we also have the full playset of Elvish Visionary, a 1-1 one -one Elf Shaman that when it enters a battlefield draws a card, so great if we can cast it at a discount with the Anarchomancer or if we get to double its triggers with the Harmonic Prodigy. And Burning Tree Emissary is another card that can lead to some very crazy starts. A 2-2 Human Shaman that when it enters adds red and green mana to our mana pool, so it can help us double spell the same turn we play the Emissary on turn 2, but especially if we have Harmonic Prodigy in play and start doubling the triggers from the Burning Tree Emissary, we start generating additional mana, which can help us deploy the rest of our hand, leading to some crazy powerful starts. And then besides the Anarchomancer, we also get to play with two copies of Shatter's Call Smashing, as a removal spell that we can also play as a land gets even better if we can cast it at a discount with the Goblin Anarchomancer. At 3 mana, besides Pyromancer and Rage Forger, we also have two copies of a Realm Walker naming Shaman as a way to provide card advantage, letting us cast Shamans off the top of our deck. And finally, two copies of Goblin Rune Blaster as a 2-1 Goblin Shaman with Haste, also has Kicker for a single red, and when the Rune Blaster enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, we get to destroy target a non-basic land, especially powerful if we can double that trigger with Harmonic Prodigy, and the opponent has multiple non-basic lands in play. And even though it's not the best combo with Collected Company, as we won't be able to kick it, it's still a 2-1 Haste we can find off of it if there's no better options available. And then a mana base includes two copies of a Den of the Bugbear as a nice creature land, and then a whole host of a red-green dual lands with Stomping Ground, Rootbound Crag, and the red-green pathway, and then four basic forests and four basic mountains. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand's fine. Turn to an Archimancer for a mana discount, and then Pyromancer to cycle through the deck. Rage Forger to eventually close out the game. And land is a good draw, especially if they deal with the Anarchomancer here. So we can already kick Rune Blaster next turn if we want. So that seems like a good plan, although, oof, Harmonic Prodigy. 
That's tempting. I think I should still go with the Rune Blasters since they're not guaranteed to play another non-basic land. And that slows them down. The alternative, I guess, would be Prodigy into Seasoned Pyromancer. Double its triggers, discard the other Pyromancer. Although I kind of want to keep both Rage Forger and Rune Blaster. Yeah, I think we just go with Kicked Rune Blaster here. Don't have any good attacks, but that's fine. And then next turn Prodigy into Rage Forger with an extra Shaman looks pretty strong. Alright, opponent does have a tapped Kazandu Valley, but Prodigy into Rage Forger looks pretty strong. Double those triggers, attack, deal a ton of damage. Now, I don't even have to offer the trade for Rune Blaster since next turn we have another Rage Forger incoming. So, this seems acceptable. The downside is if they had something like Domri's Ambush and we trade, they don't have a creature to fight with, but honestly, even if they take out any of my creatures here, we should be okay. Alright, and there's a Domri's Ambush killing Prodigy. And a Pelt Collector. Alright, so land means I can play Seasoned Pyromancer, although... It's kind of weird, because we want to play the Rage Forger first, otherwise if I play Season Paramancer, I guess I can't play my land yet and I have to hope to draw a land, which is not a guarantee. So I think we're better off going Rage Forger into Paramancer, discarding the second copy. And then making an elemental even though we missed out on a plus one counter. And then we'll attack with all, and I think that's going to be okay since we're dealing, let's see, 6, put the opponent to 8. Yeah, even if they block the Rage Forger, they're chumping the other with the Pelt Collector, and then they're still taking a massive amount of damage. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Our hand has a lot of potential. Sadly, double Rootbound Crag coming into play tapped is going to slow us down. I think we still keep and just hope to get there on an untapped land. Luckily, our opponent's not off to a blazing start either. Another Rootbound Crag joins our hand. Alright, so it's a double rootbound crag against double castle Garenbrig. It's only fair. It's your opponent on mono green elves. A true tribal matchup. So we can Anarchomancer into Harmonic Prodigy. And next turn we get to do some fun things. Although, so does our opponents. And there's Archdruids. Which can lead to scary things next turn. Probably still take it. Alright. So, sequencing. I'm thinking just play two more Prodigies, play Visionary. Draw four cards. Oh man, if only we didn't draw the fourth Rootbound Crank, we would have been able to combo off with Burning Tree. I guess we'll have to wait until next turn. But then we can pretty much empty our entire hands. And this Rage Forger could already be lethal. Question is, are we going to survive an extra turn? Another Archdruid. I 
I guess we also don't have a ton of shamans in play since both the Lunar Elves and the Prodigy are non-shaman. So your opponent can activate either Shepherd or Warmaster here. So probably means I have to chump at least two creatures, if not three. Well, gotta do what you gotta do. Doesn't feel great. As we lose all our shamans in the process. So our opponent deciding not to activate a Shepherd or Warmaster, which makes sense. Alright, it's go time. Let's make some mana. And then I could leave the den untapped for what it's worth. Paramancer. See what else we pick up. Keep the Rage Forger in hand. So we're gonna get to look at a lot of cards. Make a couple elementals. Gotta hope to find like an Elvish Visionary to draw more. Realmwalker. Might be better than Rageforger at this point, since, again, Rageforger doesn't have a ton of shamans in play. So I'm just hoping Realmwalker can find more goodies. And then Pyromancer. And then gotta hope the last two cards are still good for us. A visionary would have been nice. And with the Burning Tree Emissary, which can make a lot of mana, but nowhere to put that mana. Maybe should have actually waited on playing the Burning Tree, since we have enough elemental tokens to potentially survive next turn. And could have used that mana to maybe combo with Realmwalker. Opponent's got a lot of power and toughness, but no trample at least. Although we are getting to the point where a Rage Forger could be lethal. Alright, Visionary is great. Into Burning Tree. There's hope. Just need a Rage Forger now. Not sure how many we already discarded. Looks like two. A lot of prowess triggers also that get doubled. Oh no, opponents concede. The game wasn't over yet, but let's see what would have happened. Get a ton of prowess triggers. I mean, pretty sad our opponent conceded here because anything could have still happened. If we hit Rage Forger, the game's probably over with triple Harmonic Prodigy in play and what looks like five shamans that can attack. So yeah, if we hit Rage Forger, we win. If we hit like another Pyromancer or Visionary, we're very likely to draw into the final Rage Forger. But yeah, definitely a nice victory here for Shamans. On to the next one.
All right, we're on the play with uh, fine opening hands. Looks like it's going to be turn two emissary, play visionary, and then turn three could already rage forger, or we could play realm walker first for an extra plus one counter. Opponent black whites, and looks like an artifact synergy deck. I'm going to hang on to that shatter skull smashing as removal. Ooh, Harmonic Prodigy, we definitely want to run out. So now I'm thinking just Prodigy plus maybe a tapped Shatter Skull Smashing next turn. Okay, green mana as well. Maybe more of a human's deck than a artifact deck as we see Thalia's Lieutenants. So the Sentinel now requiring two mana. Ooh, another Prodigy. This is getting... Pretty interesting. Luckily don't have many non-creature spells, so the Sentinel's not a huge problem. Dire Tactics deals with the first Prodigy, unfortunately. Good thing we have a backup. Now at this point I might just go with a Realm Walker, and then next turn go Prodigy plus Rage Forger. Name Shaman. Company on top. Still not a bad one to play, even if we have to let the opponent draw a card with a Sentinel. So our opponent on apps on humans. Black for removal like Dire Tactics, General Kudro. As we see the General here. And then White has a lot of the powerful humans that we're familiar with. Opponent passes. And do we want to make any attacks? Yeah, it's probably fine. Deal a ton of damage with Rage Forger. And then next turn, hopefully, Company finds more goodies. Rage Forger does take a lot of clicking. If they were to remake this card nowadays, it would probably be worded slightly differently, where it would all happen automatically. But yeah, opponent staring down lethal. Decides to just take it. Understandable. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a somewhat risky hand, featuring a single forest and a lot of elves. Now, if the elf survives, we do get to go turn two emissary into visionary, hopefully draw into an extra land, and then double company is pretty nice if we can get to it. So, there's high risk involved, but I think I'm trying it. Being on draw also means we've got an extra chance at finding a land as we picked up a mountain. Still would like the elf to survive so we can company on three, but now it's not a disaster if we lose it. Opponent on Monoret with Scorch Spitter into Lava Runner. And a removal on the Elf. Probably not the best matchup for Goblin Ruin Blasters, my guess. Can maybe blow up a Ramen Up Ruins if that shows up. For now. Can decide to play this as a 2-1 haste, or we can play tap stomping ground, save ourselves 2 damage, so we can company on 4. Generally we want to avoid trading our shamans, because Rage Forger makes them better. But in this case, with double company, I would be fine trading Visionary for Scorch Spitter. There's Rage Forger. Yeah, maybe it is worth it to Ruin Blaster here. Give us a blocker for Lava Runner. And uh, then I'll take the two off Stomping Ground. Maybe we pick up an untapped land that doesn't cost life. Kind of boils down to the same and makes use of three mana that otherwise goes unspent. Soul Scar Mage. Still no third land for the opponents. 
but I'm happy to trade. And a Beaumont Courier second main. Alright, I think I'm okay taking two, and then I think I'm main phasing company if we hit Burning Tree Emissary. I want to make use of that floating mana. We hit Prodigy plus Burning Tree. Which makes four mana, and we can company again. And those are pretty good. All right. Next turn we can double Visionary plus Rage Forger. Hopefully, still with the Prodigy in play. And the more burn spells I use on my creatures, the fewer they have to go face. All right. Sadly, Prodigy down. So start with Visionary. And then... Hmm, I guess could go an Archimancer into Rage Forger, but I might want to play more Shamans first. Nah, no, this is probably good enough. Attack. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn 1 Lenar Elves, turn 2 can play the Anarchomancer to set up a turn 3 Collected Company. And then we can even play the Visionary after playing Anarchomancer on turn 2, assuming the Elf survives. And then Paramancer could be a nice leftover after we cast Company and are mostly empty handed. Well, let's see what we're up against. Tapped Overgrown Tomb. Alright, Rage Forger gonna be great too. So we've got a wealth of options. I think I'm still leaning Collected Company here, and then I think I keep the Stomping Ground available, so if we hit another Narcomancer, I can still play a one mana Rage Forger afterwards as opposed to keeping the Lunar Elves untapped. All right, that was a bit of a brick. Company finding two other companies. And then we'll just play tapped to Den of the Bugbear, hit for three. Opponent ramping with Cultivates. All right, so I think we'll kick things off with a one mana Visionary. And Harmonic Prodigy is a pretty good find here. So I can play a Prodigy and then Rage Forger will double its triggers. And then we'll just attack with Elf. And there would be a lot of clicking involved, but our opponent is going to spare us, as this would be 11 damage in combat, plus another 6 damage between Rage Forger and Harmonic Prodigy, for exactly 17 damage to win the game here. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a great looking hand. Turn 1 Elf, turn 2 probably lead with Harmonic Prodigy. Although it's an interesting decision, we can decide to play Prodigy first to make extra mana with Emissary if we have expensive cards in hand, or we can just go turn to Emissary into Prodigy to develop our board a little bit more. Although now I'm definitely liking the Prodigy line of play more. And against Blue-Black I'm okay taking a bit of damage off my lands, so we can get in for one. So yeah, if Prodigy survives we get to go off next turn, making four mana with Burning Tree Emissary, so six mana total which lets us play Visionary and Rage Forger. And a stomp on the Lunar Elves is not going to change a whole lot. So, Emissary. Play Visionary. And then I could wait on the Rage Forger, although it would be more mana efficient here, so 
Hmm, interesting spot. I think I still want to get the extra visionary in play because it just means more shamans to put counters onto with the Rage Forger. And yeah, next turn is going to be pretty brutal. Especially if the opponent plays another non basic land, we get to blow up with the Rune Blaster. And there's a Drowned Kanakum. Alright, Murder Strider does kill the Prodigy, unfortunately. So we don't get to go completely crazy. Could still play the Rune Blaster to blow up a land, which is tempting. And then play an Emissary just to make more mana. We could go for Collected Company, hope to hit Harmonic Prodigy. Although going Rune Blaster here seems good enough. And then I guess we'll play the Emissary to set up a Rage Forger for next turn. Blow up the Watery Grave over the Kanakum. And yeah, next turn Rage Forger should be game if it resolves. Yeah, double Rune Blaster would have been fun, but Prodigy still did some good work and our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an exciting hand. An Archmancer plus double Prodigy and hopefully company finds some good ETB effects. Still play the Anarchomancer first. There's something to be said for turn 2 Prodigy and then turn 3 Anarchomancer Prodigy. Opponents might be playing the same deck. Oh, I've got double Prodigy in play. Opponents with a turn 3 Rage Forger. So, usually better to wait on it. Ooh, I'm not gonna pass up on this opportunity. Could have even destroyed a third land. And our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn 2 Prodigy, maybe turn 3 Prodigy before starting to deploy our Shamans. Alright, another one. Opponent on red whites aggro, maybe artifact synergy, could just be burn. As we see a Lightning Helix take care of Prodigy. Static Discharge, so definitely looks like a burn deck. Collected Company, I could main phase now. It is nice to get the Prodigy in play first before Company, but this is way more mana efficient at this point. Alright, Prodigy into probably Visionary over Rage Forger. Draw two. And then next turn we can double spell. Opponent does not want our prodigy to survive. Turns out we drew all four. Courier is probably not attacking into visionary. So how about prodigy number four into could go for Season Pyromancer. Or we could just play Visionary. If I Pyromancer, probably hang on to Visionary, discard Rage Forger land a few times to make a bunch of 1 1s. Yeah, that seems okay. Or I can just Visionary and postpone the Pyromancer a little bit longer. Still at a healthy 17, which is pretty good against the burn deck, which is running low on resources. And 
and then now we'll Pyromancer and discard a bunch of lands. Probably don't need Elf. Ooh, Burning Tree is nice. I think we can wait on Rage Forger. Play another Pyromancer first. Burning Tree is also tempting, but we're almost out of cards in hand anyway. And then Visionary. Well, it took all four Harmonic Prodigies, but the last one stuck around, and Goblin Rune Blast are also looking mighty fine. Blow up two of those lands. And we might see a concession to the Rune Blaster here, would not surprise me one bit. Still have enough mana for Rage Forger. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. Turn one Asper Sentinel, so it could be mono white humans, which should be a winnable matchup here. They might get to draw a card of company eventually with the Asper Sentinel, but we'll get a lot of value from it. We're now digging for Harmonic Prodigy. Apparition deals with an Archmancer, but we've got a backup. So how do we feel about just double an Archmancer here? Seems fine. And then Company into Rage Forger is looking good. A Ranger Captain can find another one drop. So that's gonna be a giant killer. Could be relevant if Rage Forger has Harmonic Prodigy alongside it, or if we had multiple Rage Forgers. So if I trade for Sentinel, I don't let them draw a card of company. For now I could company... And then I guess pay the two and still play Rage Forger. So I don't care about Sentinel all that much. Yeah, let's just take it. The more Shamans in play, the better Rage Forger gets. So I'll just pay for the Sentinel. And yeah, those are both pretty good. Harmonic Prodigy on top of the deck. So now I'm incentivized to wait on Rage Forger so the Giant Killer doesn't have any targets and so we can set up an even better attack next turn. And then at 9 life, you know, I could attack with the Narcomancers, but I also feel okay waiting. Bodyguards, fine. Just need to survive this one turn, and then next turn's gonna be pretty awesome. Lieutenants, alright, it's not bad. Might have to make some trades. 
that we don't necessarily want to make. Well, I can take eight, and I'm pretty sure we kill them next turn with all the triggers. Opponent deciding whether they want to play Giant Killer for one mana. And there's a Prodigy. There's a Rage Forger. And attack. Got five creatures with counters on them. Times two Rage Forgers. Times Harmonic Prodigy. So these should just be 20 triggers on the stack. Takes a little bit of clicking. And yeah, there we see 20 Rage Forger triggers on the stack as our opponent takes Xaxis. Sweet. So, yeah, our red green Shaman's deck able to beat some pretty powerful decks. Mono White Humans might be one of the more popular best of one decks at the moment. Now, if you take this to ranked, the Jeskai matchup is pretty rough, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend Shamans, given that Jeskai is one of the more popular decks out there, especially in best of three. Maybe in best of one you can still get by, and then something like the Angel Life Gain deck is probably not a great matchup either. But for the most part, I've been having a ton of fun playing Red Green Shamans, which is kind of a creature combo deck that you don't get to see very often. So for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.